Have you got that back to school feeling? I know I have, haven't been to school for years. Definitely got that feeling of, right, here we go. I feel refreshed, I feel recharged, and I am ready to go through till Christmas. On Monday, I spent part of the day planning out all my work through till Christmas. And as part of that, I included my own personal development goals. I know this is a big challenge that many of the people I work with tell me about, which is I'm so busy at work, I just don't have time to do my own personal development. And I am always saying, whoa, 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 stop. It is really important for you and your career that you prioritize your personal development. I thought in this video, uh, I would share the five steps that I follow that keep me on track. I am not perfect by any uh, stroke of the imagination, but it does really keep what I'm trying to get better at front of mind and um, helps me therefore to stay conscious. And when you're learning something, especially management and leadership skills, you have to remember that so much of our learning is in the doing, not in the thinking about, it's in the doing, and we have to find time to do that. My name is Helen Bryant. I am a coach and a trainer. I focus on management, leadership, and collaboration. And my mission is to help you learn the skills you need to thrive in your career. I've got five steps that make all the difference. Now, the key thing to remember is we are trying to get our learning from a plan, which people often have, into doing. It's in the doing that is the high value. So that is the system that we have to support. Let me take you through the five steps that I would recommend anybody follows in order to make sure they nail their personal development. Step one, get clear on what it is that you want to get better at. The main thing I see when people share their development plan with me or I ask them what they're working on is it's all just a bit vague. It's like, I want to get better at influence or I want to get better at presentations without really taking it through to say, well, what does that mean? What would that look like? How would you know you have been successful? And you need time to think it through and get clear on the goals that are appropriate for you at your level in your world. And the more you can create clarity in those goals, remember goals are outcomes, the more likely you are to build up a robust plan that will get you there and achieve them. So number one, get really clear on what it is and really challenge yourself if it's vague statements like, I'd like to get better at. Two, the second thing to do is break it down into a plan, a development plan, what I would call a 30, 60, 90 day plan. 12 weeks is a perfect amount of time to, I find, to achieve a goal. Because, so it comes back to, so much of the learning is in the doing. And you might do it once, you might do it twice, but actually, you're often changing habits, you're getting better at something. So a 90 day window really works well for, you'll have lots of opportunities to practice. So work out your plan, get clear on at 90 days, I want to be here, so that's your goal. What would you need to do in order to achieve that? So in the first 30 days, you might be uh, building up more knowledge, you're going to practice things, You've got to work out, well, what would I need to do when? And make it specific. So you've built up a clear picture of where you wanna go and you've built up a plan which is over a good amount of time to make a difference, but short enough that makes it doable. The third step is I want you to schedule in your diary 30 minutes each week. 30 minutes, that's all preferably while you're at work, in your work time, but it may have to be if your work doesn't allow it, it's just around the edges. Now, that 30 minutes, what's it for? Creating a system where you think about your personal development and keep it moving forward in short windows of time will, will almost definitely help you 
nail the plan. 30 minutes each week allows you to do two things. One, it allows you to reflect. Where am I? What's going well? What am I missing? So you're reflecting on your plan. And the more you can keep this as a live conversation with yourself by scheduling it and protecting it in your diary, again, the more likely it is it's going to happen. The second thing it does, it's like a little mini planning window. So when you've had a good reflection, what you're then gives you time to do is some planning where you realize I need to talk to someone or I need to do something else. And you can reach out in that time to keep moving your development plan forward. Step four, who can support you? Now we learn more when we learn with other people. So just staying in your own boat and keeping it close, you will learn and you will develop. But the value you would get from working with other people and getting help from other people makes such a difference. So for example, if you wanted to improve your presentation skills, look for someone who's in the meeting with you, who you trust, and ask them to be a buddy in this so that they can give you feedback. Often we go and ask a person for feedback after the event and they didn't know they were going to be asked for the feedback. So maybe they weren't quite paying as much of attention into how you were doing it. They were listening to what you were saying. So the more you can work with someone and say, I'm working on this, I'd really appreciate your feedback and let them know, today I'm practicing something new, would you give feedback on this? The more they will be prepared to give you feedback and as a consequence it will just be much much better because they'll be thinking about it as as opposed to oh yeah and whatever comes first into their head we want to help people give people feedback because people are nervous of giving feedback to each other especially if it's something that they can see could help you get better at something but they're a bit nervous how you're going to receive that message this often is your manager but if your manager is not around you at the time look for someone else who you trust who could be that person. It makes a really big difference. The other group of people I would look for to help you are people who inspire you or whose guidance you would really value. And this may be somebody further away from you who you don't work with on the day to day. Again, this is where you use your planning time to reach out to them and say, could I have a quick coffee? I would really appreciate your guidance on my work at the moment. Now, Often in, in my courses, people say, oh, I want to get a mentor, and it's a big thing. I often say to people, don't worry about mentors too much. Look for just people who you would admire and just go ask. Mentoring is a big responsibility, but sitting down with a coffee and giving somebody your point of view on something is not a big amount of time. And that allows you to kind of test each other out as well. If you find there is someone you really enjoy getting advice with, then absolutely move that into a more formal mentoring relationship. But I just think you can get so much by reaching out. And I would really look for people who are perhaps more senior to you or people in cross-functional teams who see you in a different way. Their guidance and perspective can massively help you understand where you are and what you're doing well, but also the knowledge that they can share of your organisation and the challenges you face can be so valuable. So look for people who can help you, giving you feedback and who could guide and inspire you and help you build your network. The final thing to do is tell someone the whole plan because it keeps you accountable. Now, the number one person I would hope you can tell is your manager because your manager has a responsibility to help you develop. In your one-to-ones, share what it is you're working on and what your plan is and get their feedback on it. Now, accountability is a strange thing. You, you could try and keep your plan going all by yourself and some people are very good at it. I find by far the majority are not that good at it because if you don't say it out loud to someone else, it's so easy to go, oh, well, never mind, I'll do it next week. The accountability you get from telling someone and then having them keep monitoring where you're up to just, I find, acts as a great catalyst to keep going. I hope it's your manager because it makes your one-to-ones really meaningful. They know your work closely and they should be able to really help you achieve your goals. Be proactive. 
you share the plan, you say what help you want. You're not handing over your development to them. It's your development and they can just help you. But yeah, talk to someone, tell them your plan, make yourself accountable to someone else rather than just keeping it close to. There's five steps that I think make a really big difference. You need a really clear goal, which is a clear outcome that you really think that's what I will be able to do so that you can understand the gap. You need to set a plan over 30, 60, 90 days, a 12 week window to step change your performance on whatever it is that you're focusing on. You need to schedule time with yourself in order to keep the momentum going. Just 30 minutes each week to reflect and plan will make all the difference to the success of your plan. And you need people to help you, but from both feedback, from potential mentors who can guide and inspire you and make yourself accountable by sharing the plan with somebody. Those five steps, that system makes such a difference. Now, if you are a manager, and you need help in motivating your team and you think it's really important that they own their development, you're recognising that maybe they're struggling to get going on their development, help them share this video and create a development sprint in your team. Let's all say what we're all working on, including you as the team leader, making that development visible, creating momentum will make an enormous difference to the team, the team spirit, in building trust between you, in helping everybody achieve their goals. As JF Kennedy said, a rising tide lifts all boats. And if you can achieve that in your team and emphasize that learning and development is an important part of their role and for their career success, and to give them permission to work on it, it will make such an enormous difference. So if you are a manager of others, share the tips and the system to help your team move forward with their own personal development. If you've got any questions on this, put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Or you can reach out to me on social, DM me. I'm on Instagram and I'm on LinkedIn and I would be happy to talk with any of you. This channel is just starting to gain a teeny weeny amount of traction and I can't tell you how excited I am. I've been putting videos out for quite a while now and suddenly people are reaching out to me and asking questions and it makes me happy because that's what I am trying to do, to put content out that helps anyone in their career, but especially managers and leaders, learn their craft. So any questions, please share, please reach out, and like, subscribe, and ring the bell on the video so you get notified of each and every one that I put out. Okay, until next week, take care.